Hello friends, welcome to this new video lecture on advanced algorithms. In this particular video lecture, we are going to cover the topic birthday paradox. So let's get started. Now friends, we all know what is a birthday and we know that it occurs on a particular date. Everyone has a birthday. So now the question is, how many people must be there in a room to have the same birth date? Now, if we uh, solve it logically, we might think that um, in a room, if I want uh, two people to have birthday on one single date, then we will say that let that number be 365 or 366. Okay, uh, we can consider leap years and we can around, we can say approximately let it be 367. So in that case, the, for sure there will be a possibility that two people will have birthday on the same date. So this is what is our thinking, but let me tell you, that is not the case. The case is that uh, it is much, much lesser than 365 people. So let's uh, start with the working. Okay. So we assume that there are n days in a year. So in that case, this thing, uh, let's assume that we are taking into consideration the leap years. So n equal to 365. Right. Now, let bi be the birth date of the ith person. So this birth date is going to lie between the first day of the year till the last day of the year. So obviously the number of days in a year, we have assumed it to be 365. So it's going to be lie between 1 and n. Now, let's start with the probabilistic analysis. So what does probabilistic analysis say? That we have to do certain assumptions, right? We start with an assumption of the inputs, of the distribution of the inputs. So what do we assume over here? We assume that the birthdays are uniformly distributed. We assume that every single per the people, person in the room is having birthday on a different date. So what is the probability that a person is having his birthday on a particular date R? So that would be what? It would be 1 out of those 365 days. So we can say that the probability is 1 by n, where n is the number of days, right? And that day r could be any day out of those n days, right? And n is 365. But now the thing is like we are checking for b of i. Now what is i? i is the number of people inside the room. Now i can range from 1 to k, where k is the total number of people inside that room. So let's start and let's say that uh, we have made some assumptions, but obviously we can't work with respect to those assumptions. So let's bring about some randomization. So what is randomization? We are going to randomize the selection of birthdays, right? And when we randomize the selection of birthdays, that means we are going to randomly select two people and check whether their birthdays are going to match or not, right? So for that to happen, we are using some randomized algorithm so that we just... Uh, uh, like have a random selection of people and uh, that will make the uh, selection process independent. So therefore the probability that ith and the jth birthday will fall on the same day R, right? We have to calculate this. So probability of B of I equal to R and B of J equal to R. So the birthday of person I and birthday of person J on the day R. So what is the probability? As they are independent, we can say the probability of B I equal to R uh, into probability of BAJ equal to R, which is uh, n1 by n into 1 by n, which brings about 1 by n square. So the probability of two people having birthday on the same date has come out to be 1 by n square. Now this is for some particular day R, but if we check out, let this R be all of the days in a year. That means let R be the first day of the year till 365 days, uh, 365th day of the year. So in that case, for all n days when we are checking out the probability, so uh, the probability of bi equal to bj for all n days. So the r is going to range from 1 to n, right? And we already have the probability of bi equal to r and bj equal to r as 1 by n square. So when we summation, do the summation of r from 1 to n, it will be 1 by n square plus 1 by n square plus 1 by n square till what? Till we reach the last 365th day, right? So finally, when we add this up, all the ones in the numerator will add up to become 365, that is n. And then the denominator will be surely be n square. So it will be n by n square, which will finally result into 1 by n. Now, so we are going to solve this problem with the help of the indicator random variable. Now, what is an indicator random variable? We clearly saw that it's a, a relation between the probability and uh, the expectation, right? 
So what is an expectation? As we brought about a randomness inside the input, we say that the expected uh, the running time changes from the actual running time to uh, the expected running time. Now we need a thing to calculate this expected running time for which we are using the indicator random variable. An indicator random variable brings about a connectivity between the probability and the expectation. So let's see how it works it out. So for a pair of uh, person uh, like two people i and j out of k people inside the room, let x of i j be the indicator random variable. And this i and j are going to be those two people from 1 to between 1 to k. Now x of i j equal to 1. When if i and j have the same birth date, okay, and it will be zero if they don't match, okay. So we are going to find out the expectation, which is the probability of both the person having the birth date on the same date. So we can say capital X equal to summation of i equal to 1 to k, and j is i plus 1 uh, to k, so that i and j are not the same person, and that is x of i j. So let's apply expectation on both sides and we see that expectation. We take out the summation and expectations come out for x of i j. Now we know that we are going to take pairs of people out of k people in a room. So that is k of 2. So what is k of 2? It is a binomial coefficient. Okay, it means that we are going to choose uh, two people uh, out from uh, as a subset from uh, k people. So choosing this two uh, people, okay, there'll be like number of ways in which we can choose two people. So what are the number of ways? It is the NC2, right? So uh, in this case, it is KC2. So what would be KC2? It is uh, K factorial divided by K minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial. So that will result down into K into K minus 1 divided by 2. So it will be K into K minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 1 by N. So that will result it into K into K minus 1 divided by 2n. So this is how we get the uh, probability uh, or the expectation. Now the expectation uh, is set. Uh, now we know the value of n also that is 365. So if we solve it, what would be the value of k? So now the value of k, it comes around to be approximately 23. So let's see how it is 23. So with 23 people in the room, we have 253 pairs to be worked on. Okay, so that is the NC2 that we do that is uh, uh, K into K minus 1 divided by 2. So we have 253 pairs. Now 253 pairs we have right now. What are the chances of two people having different birthdays? So if the first person walks in the room uh, and uh, what will be the probability he is having a different birthday? It will be completely one right because there's no one in the else in the room. But what is the probability of the second person having a different birthday now why are we working with different birthdays we were actually planning to have the same birthday right so it's just that we are trying to prove the opposite okay so we know in probability that uh, to probability to prove something is one minus probability of the negation of that particular thing so in this case we are uh, trying to match uh, birthday of two people so we are going to see uh, how we could do it by one minus uh, difference of two people so in this case, it is uh, for the second person when he enters, okay, his birthday will be evaluated with respect to the first person also. So he doesn't have 365 days to be checked from. Uh, he has only options of 364 days so that he doesn't match with that person. So that's why we can say it is 1 minus 1 by 365, which is 364 by 365. So this particular new per second person has 99 uh, per 0 0.726% chance that his birthday will be different from the first person. So this is how we can go on when we can check it for the third person. The third person will be having probability of 363 divided by 365. So that would be lesser than 99.726. Okay. So his probability keeps on decreasing, right? So how could we get it? Now, when comparing one person's birthday to another, in 364 out of 365 scenarios, they won't match. But making 253 comparisons and having them all be different is like getting heads 253 times in a row if you're having a coin toss. So, and in every 253 times, you have to dodge tails, which is a huge task, right? So, now to solve this particular case, we, can, we will be using exponents. That will be the simplistic way of working it out. So, it is 364 divided by 365 raised to 253 pairs right and we see that uh, when i do this the probability is coming up to be 0.4995 now this is the probability of difference right 
so what is the probability of match probability of match would be 1 minus the probability of difference that is 1 minus 49.95 so it is 50.05 so we can clearly see we are just over half right so it is uh, more than 50 percent chance that we might uh, get the birth date on the same day so we can work with this and so let's see the formula how we got 253 it was com uh, combination of uh, n by 2 right so it is nc2 so we can see a uh, probability for n people is 1 minus 364 divided by 365 uh, that is uh, finally what uh, uh, c of n by 2 is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 and that is how we can get the value let's understand at a deeper level now this particular video has been created by taking a reference from betterexplain.com wherein uh, the things have been explained really well so i have uh, used that particular source now uh, how do we see it happening is that so we can see the first person when he enters the room what is the probability that he'll have the birthday on a different date okay he has 100 percent 100 percent chance so the probability is one when the second person comes in okay it is 1 minus uh, 1 by 365 that is 364 by 365 that is the chance for the second person now when the third person uh, comes up okay his chance is 363 by 365 similarly that goes on for 22nd person right and finally we know that when the 23rd person arrives okay we clearly say that uh, we have a better chance that means more than 50 percentage of chance right so this particular thing p of different could also be solved as like uh, e of x exponent of x uh, which is equivalent to 1 plus x so 1 minus uh, 1 by 365 could be represented as e raised to minus 1 by 365 so finally p of difference could be calculated as 1 for the first person multiplied by e raised to minus 1 by 365 for the second person into e raised to minus 2 by 365 for the third person similarly goes on for the 22nd person if we do this calculation we see that uh, uh, we can just have the numerator together we take out the minus sign and when we work it out it comes out to be the probability as 449.9998 uh, right and uh, there might be more decimals to it we have just rounded out over here okay so finally we know that this is the probability of difference if we do the probability of match which is one minus probability of difference that would result into more than 50 percentage of the chance okay so this is a particular snapshot taken from this particular site of betterexplain.com and uh, there's a good simulation to work it out and you can see that uh, when we click on this button uh, onto that particular site the algorithm has already been coded and uh, a new trial work keeps on coming right so every single trial you can see in this case i have done 29 trials out of which 18 has given me a positive result that means two people out of 23 people are having birthday on the same date so that is more than 50 percent chance right so the chance was supposed to be 50.05 but we can see after 29 iterations uh, it is 62.07 now this might come down in the next trial and it might increase in the next trial okay it's all about probability so i hope uh, you have understood this lecture you can go through these references uh, the third video link uh, explains the topic at a deeper level so you can go through it okay and the first link uh, is the uh, place where you can find the simulation as well as the video of the third link so i hope you have understood the lecture uh, if you have like like the video kindly like share and subscribe thank you so much happy learning enjoy advanced algorithm thank you